A big welcome to our channel, we are Team Crushing the Mana and you can call me D-Boy. I'm here with yet another deck profile, this would be Dark Regular as you can see. Uh, Bladewing build with Sil Gilderay and this is one of the decks that will break the mana. Uh, I will be playing this deck in a tournament but first I thought I would like to show you the deck and then uh, yeah, let you know how this deck did. So first, let's go through the deck. For your starter, I run um, Ordinance. His skill is GB1, he goes into the soul by counter blasting 1, and then you can soul charge 2 more. So, very good card, soul charge 3 and get an extra card. For the grade 3s, the first grade 3 that I like is Sherlock Vampire. Uh, still love this card, very good. Uh, when you stride, you can count, count blast 1, soul charge 2, and then. When your G unit attacks, if you have six or more cards in your in your soul, then your opponent has to choose and retire a rare guard. And this is another skill, GB2. When he attacks, he gets 10k if you have six cards in your soul and an extra crit if you have 10. So a very good card to have. Um, sometimes I have to, let's say, ride him first, and then I would still go into him second. But I will show you that in a minute uh, how this deck works. Uh, next grade three is for Bladewing Solvian. This card is it, it it could this is the card that break the mana. Um, the thing is with this card when you ride him as your finger, you can choose one of your rare guards and put it into your soul, and then you can search your deck for all cards with the same name and also put them into your deck. So he does work really good with the uh, Dimensional Creeper, and does just like Blade with Ragey, the same. Uh, but his uh, first skill is when you guard, so when you put anything on your G-Zone, let's say you put your uh, starter on your G-Zone, when you guard with him, he gets an extra 10k, so you would be attack uh, defending with 20k. Um, and then at the end of the battle, this unit is attacked, even if you don't guard, at the end of the battle, you will have two Soul Blast 2. So he loses two cards every time that he gets attacked. So even if you if your opponent attacks with something and it doesn't hit, you have to <laughs> Soul Blast 2. But that's not bad because I will show you the the next when when you stride, um, then you can put all of the cards in your drop zone back into your deck. And that skill is for your for this stride. The blade wing stride is really good. When you stride into him, you can use his skill and shuffle your drop zone back into your deck. So his skill is not bad because he does shuffle them back. His another skill is is the skill that you want to use, and that is if you don't have fifteen cards into your soul, then you can soul charge five, which which is really good. Um, and if you do have 15 or more, then he gets gives your front row 10k. But you don't really want to use that skill, you just want to soul charge with this card. And the thing is, you only run him because he puts the drop zone back into your deck, so you don't deck out and you don't lose. Next card that you have to run in Dark Regular is Gilderay. Uh, his skill is, if you have 10 cards in your soul, he gets an extra 10k. If you have 15 or more, he gets the skill that your opponent can't guard with a grade 1 or higher. And also, if you have 2 or more face-up cards in your G-Zone, he gets an extra crit. So an extra crit, extra 10k, and your opponent can't guard with a grade 1 or higher. And my last stride is uh, Love Tempest, Kiss Kill Lyra. Her skill is, when she hits... At the Vanguard, you can Soul Charge 2, and if you have 6 or more cards in your soul, you can draw a card. Uh, I like her because sometimes you go into Bladewing first. Uh, I mean, you go into Charlotte Vampire first because you don't have your Bladewing. Uh, you can still go into Keskelira, use his skill, cut plus 1, put 2 cards in your soul. So you have 6 cards, you have more than 6 cards in your soul. And then you can use your starter if you want to. Uh, put him in the soul, cut, cut plus 1 more. And soul charge more, and then when she hits, 
on that turn you do pressure your opponent with her skill. Um, but normally if you go into your blade wing, then you just go into the blade wing stride and then from there you can soul charge 5. So, and also you shuffle your trap zone back into your deck. Uh, for the great 2s, I still like to play for Flying Liberian. Um, her skill is on call. She's a GB1, she's only 8k, and when this unit is placed on Regard, you may pay the cost, which is Count Blasting 1, Soul Charge 2 more, and then if the number of cards in your soul is 6 or more, you will draw a card. And if there are 10 or more, you can counter charge 1. So she's a free Soul Charge 2 and draw a card. And uh, the only downside about her is she's only 8k, but having her as a rear guard, you can't just guard with her and she'll be 15k guard with Sylvian skill. So still not bad. Next card is Skull Make Vampire. Uh, when she she's also a GB1 when she attacks and she is boosted, you can't blast one, and then you can soul charge two and she gets an extra 5k. So being boosted by 7k booster. She would be attacking for 21, which is good, without trigger. Uh, also, I like to have her for late game, because she still fill up your soul. And uh, that means more defending with your finger. So. Um, Emblem Master, two of him, uh, just to pressure your opponent early game, especially early game. When he attacks a finger and he hits, you can soul charge one. Uh, I mean, you yeah, you can. Yeah, <laughs> if he hits, you count blast one and then you soul charge three. So very good to just pressure your opponent. Otherwise, late game, I would rather have a skull make vampire. And next card, I only tag one of him is Gwen the Reaper. Uh, he's when he's called two finger the rear guard, you soul charge, you count blast two, and then you can retire a great one or less from your opponent's rear guard. So very good to have because this deck is not count blast heavy but still if you go into your charlotte vampire first because you don't have your blade wing then i would rather not use his skill so that's why i only play one of him uh he's really good against decks like aqua force and uh, dimension police great one lineup for normal perfect guard because you need them against Kyger and Dimension Police. Also, this deck is not count as heavy. Four of your strides and um, fathers. Uh, you need them because this deck does stride a lot. Dimensional Creeper because this deck. <laughs> this is a very good card to have in here with your Blade Wing. This is the card that you need to have on your rear guard to put him into a soul search your deck for more cards uh, of the same name and put them into your soul. Then you can soul blast them all to soul charge because when you soul blast him you can soul charge two more so having him in your drop zone you can shuffle him back into your deck a very good combo that you could do in this deck and uh, next card is three visionary gemini he gets uh, extra 5k when he's when he guards if you have six cards in your soul and if you have 10 or more he gets an extra 10k so he would be defending for 15k by himself and using Sylvian skill would be a 25k guard, which is almost like a perfect guard. 25k. Ridiculous. For your trigger lineup, three draw triggers, a very good card. Uh, this deck you don't really deck out that fast, so because you do put your drops on back into your deck, so, so that's why I run draw triggers. Uh, next, I run three, uh, two, five. And 7 crits. 7 crits because sometimes your opponents only add 3 damage. And when you attack with Guild Ray and the attack goes through, you do need one more crit to just finish the game. Uh, also, if your opponent is at 4 damage and he gets a heal, that's when you need an extra crit. So the extra crit is always good in this deck. I don't run stand triggers. I could do because this stand is really good. Uh, her skill is on GB1. She goes back into the, your deck, you uh, you soul charge one, and then if the card's in your soul is six or more, you unflip a damage, If you, and if you have ten or more, you draw a card. But you don't really want to play her in this deck because you don't have strong... Um, 
uh, rear guards to attack with, so that's why she's useless. Uh, also, the counter charging is not really needed, but it is a very good card because it goes back into your deck and it gives you a free card. So, yeah, I'm not sure about her yet. I could take the trot triggers out to put her in here. I don't really want to get the the critical out because I do need them. I think you do need the criticals with Gildre. So that's why I'm still not sure about this card. I would maybe take the trot triggers out, but for now I'm testing it like this. And last but not least, you play four heal triggers. Uh, this is a survival deck, so you do need the heal triggers. Uh, this deck does really well against uh, this meta because it you don't really have the rear guards that Kagero could retire. Uh, you have the fang guard that gives you the opportunity to guard, and you have your finisher, which is Gilderay. Uh, these two cards make this deck so strong, and your destroyed also give you the the one thing that Dark Dragon lose into and that is decking out. Um, very good finisher, very good defensive vanguard and a very good card just to fill up everything and makes this deck so good. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Uh, I will do a deck um, another video and I will talk about how this deck did in the tournament. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, till next time.